Hi there, everybody. This is Kate from Main Street ROI. Here to join us um, for Master Your Marketing presented uh, today by Spy Flu. We're going to give it another minute or two to let a couple other people uh, get on the line with us. There's still some attendees trickling in. Um, but just, you know, if you want to comment in the chat box, let us know where you're joining from. We'd love to get some more information about that, and then we'll get started in another minute or two. All right, looks like we've got people coming in from all over the place, from Tampa and Utah, New York City, over in the UK. Yeah, I love these things. Yeah. <laughs> Colorado, London, UK, Chicago, I love it. Where are you, uh, where are you right now? You're in uh, New York, New York City? Me? Yeah, hey. so I actually, yeah. uh, yes, I am um, in New York City. I live in Hoboken, New Jersey, right across, right across the Hudson from Manhattan. And so, how is how's how's your weather there today? What's it look like? Fine, finally sunny and nice. <laughs> it's been nice. cold here. We've had the longest winter ever, but we're finally up in like the mid 60s and some sunshine. So it's been a long time. That usually happens earlier for us here, but New York has been hanging in the 40s yeah. for most of April. So yeah, you see on like Reddit and stuff, there there'll be like you know people with like six feet of snow, and I'm like, this is nuts. I mean, because here it's in, in Scottsdale. <laughs> It's been, I mean, it's basically like 95 degrees out right now, which is, oh my which is actually, which is actually relatively temperate for us, to be honest. <laughs> is 95 it? is pretty, pretty nice. Yeah. I'm enjoying the 90s while I can. It's pretty nice. Yeah. That, that I can't see. And of course I'm, I'm wishing for warmer, but definitely not wishing for that warm. <laughs> little, yeah. little temperamental here. I like like 80 and sunny with no humidity. So. Ooh, we have we have Cape Town, South Africa, and the Dominican Republic. That's pretty pretty dope. Oh, wow. Cool. So we should get started. Um, yeah, let's get started. So, um, welcome everybody. If you're just joining the line, my name is Kate. I'm the content marketing manager here at Main Street ROI, uh, and we're really excited to have you join us for the latest webinar in our Master Your Marketing series. Today we have Mike Roberts from Spyflu on the line, um, and uh, the presentation will be about an hour. Feel free to ask questions in the question box along the way. We're going to try to answer those as we go and then save some Q&A for the end as well. Um, the webinar will be recorded and we'll be sending out a replay with a PDF of the slides as well as a recording. So don't feel like you have to take notes and write every single thing down. Um, we'll make sure you get this information and can access it later. Uh, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to to Mike and Patrick here from SpyFu, and uh, we'll get started with the webinar. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks, Thanks Kate. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm Mike Roberts. I'm the, I'm the founder and CEO of SpyFu, uh, and today I'm going to talk about um, I'm going to talk about like some some big mistakes that uh, SEOs, the best SEOs in the entire world, are making, and uh, and it's the same mistake that we've made, and honestly, you're probably making it too. Um, the crazy thing is, is that this this mistake is is uh, is completely avoidable, uh, and it's not your fault. Uh, and 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 it's actually there's actually somebody else to blame, which is kind of I don't know if you like that thing. Um, so uh, Patrick is on the line here, and Patrick is going. Patrick's uh, Patrick's here at SpyFu, um, and he is. Uh, we actually, we actually uh, do a podcast together, and so we, we have like this kind of on-air thing that we do, and occasionally maybe I'll ask Patrick questions or kind of talk to him, um, but more importantly, Patrick is going to uh, read your questions live, uh, and, and I'll answer them as they happen, and we'll you know, basically be able to engage in that way. This is always a really super engaged audience. We've got 400, we got 423 people in, in here right now, um, and more are coming in, and so it'll be. Um, uh, uh, so I expect that we'll be able to uh, answer questions as as you see them. Um, this is not necessarily going to be the the most deep technical dive into SEO. Um, that's kind of like that was like our working title. This is more about mistakes that people made, and um, and so hopefully I'll be able to give you some some kind of. Um, some lessons learned without putting you to sleep. That's my goal. My goal is to deliver some, like solve this problem for you with 
without making you want to sleep. Okay. Um, uh, this uh, this Master Your Marketing Marketing Webinar Series is um, is brought to you by these guys at um, Main Street ROI, uh, and uh, we happen to be one of the uh, one of the partners. Uh, other partners are Optimizer, Active Demand, AdRoll, Campaign. Hold on, something's covering up part of my slide. The campaigner, and uh, and of course, and of course us. Um, Before we begin, so, um, uh, can we? Uh, is are people getting good audio? I'm getting some kind of comments that that there's breaking or echoing. I just want to make sure that that most of you can can hear it okay. Also, while those are coming in, Mike, are you going to cover um, uh, cold calling? Uh, prospective clients at all? Are you going to cover cold calling? I beg your pardon. No. Cold calling. I don't no. think I'm going to cover cold calling. Um, so I don't know. Can you hear? Is is there any echoing going on? Can you hear echoing, Kate? Um, I, I don't. I, I can't tell what what happens on the other end of my call, but I it's, I know that I have. It sounds like it most of the audio is good with maybe some echo and some feedback for but for the most part echoing it sounds like we're good to go awesome okay so uh, real quick background on spy Fu. Uh, we're based in scottsdale arizona uh, we've been here since like 2005 and everyone at spy Fu works out of this office so patrick is like right next to me and basically everybody that that you ever talk to at spy Fu actually works here um, if you've never um, if you've never heard of spy Fu, um, you can uh, you can go to spyfu.com. You can do it right now. Uh, it's free. Uh, you can type in any website and see every keyword that they've ever bought on Google, um, every ad variation that they've ever run, every organic ranking, all their backlinks. Basically, uh, you know, basically uh, you can spy on your competitors uh, and learn from their mistakes without having to suffer through them. Um, so that's kind of the the spyfu in 15 seconds. Um, as the founder, uh, it turns out that I wear a lot of hats, right? I wrote the code for the original code for, I don't write code anymore, but I wrote the, the original code for SpyFu, uh, built the servers, I uh, wrote the marketing copy, I ran ads, um, I bought groceries, I literally built the office. Patrick, before, Pat, before I hired Patrick, I made videos. Um, they were horrible videos, you should go look them up, they're awful, right, Patrick? <laughs> Um, they're they're entertaining. I think they're great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like the basic idea of being a founder is that is that you want to replace yourself. Like you, you really, basically, my goal is to never do, do anything. I want uh, to to replace myself to hire people that are better at me, better than me at every little every task. But at the end of the day, if groceries need to be bought or like electrical cable needs to get run, uh, somebody has to do it, and it ends up being me. Um, and one of my last remaining hats is, uh, is, is technical SEO guy, um, which I guess I've, I don't know exactly why I've hung on to this thing because there's, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things that I've replaced. This is one of my last ones that I, that I hold on to. And it's not like I'm super passionate about, um, technical SEO or anything. And maybe it's because, uh, it's kind of like this role that's, sits in between, you know, uh, technical, like, um, you know, developer and like marketing or something. And that's kind of a natural fit for me. Anyway, I still occupy this role at, uh, at SpyFu. Um, and it turns out that I suck at it. I'm not, I screw it up a lot. Um, I've probably made every mistake in the book, uh, because I've been doing it for SpyFu for about, uh, you know, for 12 years, for as long as the company's been around. Um, but I, I really don't have time to, you know, to devote to it like I should. I spend maybe 10 hours, 10 hours a quarter rather than 10 hours a week. Um, maybe, maybe it's a 20 hour a week job. Um, anyway, I don't give it the amount of attention that it deserves. But uh, it's also not necessarily like, you know, I'm always going to be second, you know, mediocre at, at pretty much everything I do. That's pretty much how it is. Um, and so there's uh, there's definitely opportunity for somebody to improve it on, on what I did. Um, and the kind of screw ups I'm talking about is like robots issues, broken inbound links with no to re redirect, duplicate titles, meta descriptions, inadvertent, I've in, inadvertently spoofed <laughs> or advertently, but mostly inadvertently. Um, and basically every duplicate content issue, this is kind of the nuts and bolts of what uh, technical SEOs 
um, are, are supposed to not have happen, and I've basically had them all happen. Um, so it's time for a change. So um, we, uh, so I, I'm looking, I, I'm looking to replace myself with the world's best technical SEO. Um, they have to be at least as good as me, but probably better, and uh, and they need to come to our office in Scottsdale, Arizona, right? So I'm look, I, I decided <clears throat> it's time to get rid of myself, to replace myself. Uh, so I posted the job, um, technical SEO overlord in Scottsdale, Arizona, and uh, uh, here, here's the job description. It's posted, and I've got I got lots of high quality. Like I got tons of applicants. I probably got over a hundred applicants, and um, and some of them are super high caliber, super high quality, like tons of experience. Um, people working at like the you know name brand like agencies that you've definitely heard of like really big agencies uh, i got the you know top technical seos people working at fortune 500 companies they're like lead seo technical seo people um and uh and and so i was pretty pretty stoked right pretty pretty stoked got some really great really great people. So, um, so I started doing these interviews and just a couple of notes on how I do interviews. I, I, uh, I write and follow a script. So for this t technical SEO position, I, uh, built myself a script, basically asking consistent questions and it's, it's for science. I mean, it, it's for science, but it's really, you know, kind of self-serving, right? Because I don't want to like miss really good people by asking them tricky questions. I don't want to confuse anyone. Um, and by asking a consistent set of questions, I can tell the difference between good and great. Um, it also makes it so that I don't have to, if I ask the same set of questions and I dial in an interview process, I can turn it over to somebody else and um, so that I don't have to do all the interviews, right? But for this position, because I've never hired it before, it's, impor it's important that I do the first, you know, N number, right? Um, okay. So... Here's what I found. When I got to a particular subject, everyone, <clears throat> almost everyone, basically completely fell apart. And it was a pretty big surprise. And the, and the, and the topic is duplicate content, right? Now, when you think of duplicate content, most of, most of the time, if I would ask somebody what duplicate content is, uh, they would tell me that duplicate content is, uh, you know, when, you know, you have something on your website and then somebody copies it and puts it on their website. And yeah, that's, that's, that's duplicate content. That's plagiarism. That's when somebody takes content from you or, and that happens of course. And, you know, Google, Google has endeavored to, you know, solve that problem. Um, the duplicate content that I'm talking about is a little bit, is, is, is different. Usually, mostly I'm talking about on site, like duplicate content on your own website. So anytime two or more different URLs return the same content. So anytime two or more different URLs return the same content, you have duplicate content, which makes, you know, which seems really straightforward, right? It turns out that every website in the entire world has tons of duplicate content your website has tons of duplicate content. Every website that you will encounter has a lot, like basically almost infinite amount of duplicate content. And you need to be able to, you need to deal with it uh, in order to make it so that Google doesn't, okay. I actually probably should have put in a slide for this, but, uh, but uh, I have like this weird curse of knowledge thing going on. Um, the reason that you want to get rid of duplicate content, the reason you don't want to have two URLs returning the same content on your website is that when you do that, Google treats those things, uh, basically it splits up all of your authority between those two pages. And then it splits up all of the authority that you get to pass along, right? So you don't, you want all of the like link juice that you have pointing to a single page. Otherwise, it damages the rank, the ranking capability of, you know, basically both. The, say you have two pieces of content that are the same, or you know, it's basically two URLs with the same content. Well, can you give an example of that, Mike? Um, 
Uh, yeah, uh, I'm about we'll to give a crap time. load of examples. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. Great. Um, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give a bunch of examples, but I, I want to get uh, an idea of like what the what what happens when you have duplicate content. Um, so so you're basically going to split up all of all of your ranking ability between multiple pages, and so it pushes everything down, right? Pushes all the stuff down the page, everything. So you want to combine all of the juice that you have into one piece of content, right? So that's the that's the idea. Um, and then the thing that I found is that is that even the very best, the brightest, the best technical SEOs were missing considerable amount of this. Like they completely flubbed on these on these on this subject. Um, and part of the issue is a lot of the examples out there suck, right? So thanks for asking, Patrick, because <laughs> a lot of the examples that I found when when people are talking about tech, uh, about duplicate content are like. Oh yeah, you know, you've got like a calendar. If you've got like a calendar on your website and like every, you know, every day of that calendar is like a page, then, you know, and like there's a lot of empty, you know, empty slots on the calendar, then you've got a lot of duplicate content. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't have a calendar on my website, so um no big deal. Or like you've got like these search results and like they're empty and it's like yeah okay cool I, i'll get rid of empty search results you know that type of thing those are like the type of examples but the thing is is that there are like lots of examples where everybody's website everybody everybody's website has duplicate content so i guarantee that these examples apply to your website i guarantee that all of these examples apply to your website okay First one is www versus non www, right? This is this is a case where you know you could type this in, type in your website, go to like www.yourwebsite.com and go to the non www version. If you can navigate to both of those and they return the same piece of content, that's duplicate content. Another example is if you support HTTP and HTTPS, right? So if you can go to httpyourwebsite.com and HTTPS, your website.com, and they both return, that's potentially duplicate content. And of course, every other URL on your website that's HTTP and HTTPS, Google treats those as, as, as separate pieces of content. This one's like so annoying and so like, you know, uh, minute details, right? But a trailing slash is a, dif a duplicate URL, spyfu.com versus spyfu.com slash. Those are different URLs, and that, that's, that's essentially duplicate content. This one, you know, maybe you would imagine that Google could hypothetically deal with this, and, you know, it should because it's kind of like super obvious that it's, not, that it's the same thing. Um, and that's true. You know, it's, it's true that, 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 that it's possible that Google will basically smooth this over for you, but when you have a really huge site, when you have a lot of – the more URLs that you have on your site, the, um, the more likely it is that it's going to get confused, that, that Google will get confused. And um, it's also an advantage – anyway, I'm just going to move on past that one because it's actually kind of one of the narrowest cases. Case sensitivity. Okay. So URLs are case sensitive. Um, you would be surprised at like basically probably 70% of the people that I interviewed did not know that, uh, that URLs are case sensitive. But, you know, if you think of like the, the sharing URL for like a Google doc or something, you know, when you share it, you know, those, you know, that long string of, uh, of, of characters that happens after like the question mark, um, you know, the, if you change the case of any of those things, that sharing is going to break. That's like an example that you can think of. Typically on our websites, typically on our sites, we don't um, we don't think that they're case sensitive. We think that a page is going to be a page, um, but in the eyes of Google, because this is this is actually how URLs work, a case sensitive URL, a different different cases are actually different URLs. Now that's not the case with DNS. So like the actual host name, you can do all you want with that because DNS itself, which is DNS is the thing that gets you to that server, right? So you type in www.spyfu, it goes to like something DNS servers and the DNS servers tell you, you know, tell your computer where to go, right? And once you get there, then the, then the, uh, then the server decides what to serve. But 
Um, but these things, uh, the www.spyfu.com versus capitals, that actually doesn't matter. You don't need to worry about that. Another case of, uh, of duplicate content uh, that is pretty, is sometimes insidiously hard to detect is these operational environments, right? So, um, so why would we have www.spyfu.com or QA test or cdn.spyfu.com? Um, well, these are things that developers or, or develop, you know, operations people uh, put in, right? And the reason that they put them in is so that, you know, like in the case of SpyFu, for example, we have, you know, many servers that actually serve the SpyFu experience, right? And they all show up under www, but uh, if you want to go to one of those individual servers to like troubleshoot it, then oftentimes there's, there's a URL to do that. And we need to be able to deal, deal with that because uh, hypothetically, the entire SpyFu website could be duplicated, like not just that one page, but the entire site. Same thing with any kind of QA environment or CDN stands for Content Distribution Network. So if you want to have, if you want to have your content, you know, uh, show up fast in like Australia and you're based in, you know, the US, um, then you might use a CDN uh, to duplicate your content all over the place. Well, um, that your CDN actually has a URL and you need to make sure that that doesn't get um, indexed by Google. You have to make sure that you're not uh, uh, providing duplicate content there. Okay, so these are things that apply to apply to like lots of people, but um, but these ones, these next few are actually kind of tricky. These get a little bit tricky here, okay? Um, and also, you know, we spend a lot of time doing marketing and we do this stuff. The like, best practice is, uh, is to do, like, is to source, you know, is to provide a link so that Google Analytics can pick up, uh, you know, your marketing source, right? Everybody's supposed to do these UTM things, right, Patrick? What is all, everybody, everybody says, you know, make these, make these marketing parameters. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Just, yeah. Put them in place. <laughs> if, yeah, if I if I link to if I link to SpyFu with a UTM source and that page returns the same content as just a normal link to SpyFu, that's also duplicate content, right? Mm -hmm. Bad, yeah. bad times. Um, similar thing with affiliate tracking, right? Like we don't have to, you know you kind of hypothetically have control. Like if I post something to SlideShare or whatever, I hypothetically have control over this. Many, many, most of these things you should assume that you don't have control over, right? Um, uh, in fact, oftentimes, oftentimes people, when I talk to them about case sensitivity, um, that I'd, I'd say, you know, how do you deal with case sensitivity? Uh, you know on your website how do you deal with that in terms of duplicate content and and because they don't know the answer to this stuff uh they'd say well i'd just be really really careful and make sure that i'm not doing that and i'd be like okay well what happens if somebody you know outside you know links to your uh links to your site with a with a um with a you know a different case right like if somebody if if my if my pricing page is slash main purchase lowercase and, and I'm like really diligent on my website to make sure that I only ever use the lowercase one, what if somebody else, some evil bastard in like, you know, some, some, you know, on, you know, some blogger someplace just decides to type out the thing and uses a, you know, mixed case. What do you do there? And so the, the answer uh, of some of these guys is, well, then I would, I would reach out to them and ask them to change the link. Well, that's not gonna work. I have a million links. Like SpyFu is a big website. I can't, I can't do that, right? Okay, so um, I'm gonna give you the solutions to all these, I promise. The, the solutions come at the end and, and I'm, I'm gonna try and you know, keep you awake uh, until we get there, okay? Um, um, just a couple of questions that people, are, sure. that people are asking in terms of what duplicate, different types of duplicate content are in terms of like editorial. Um, you know, because we're talking about technical URLs, but let's say, you know, you have uh, many sites for or many pages with different items of jewelry on them. They all or sunken treasure. They all have the same description. Someone else is asking if one page is 10% different than a different 
then a different page is that considered duplicate um you know and and and, you know, are we going to, are you going to cover some of that? Or um, do you have any insight on more editorial based content? I, I'm, I, I will, I will definitely cover that. Okay. okay. Uh, and, but I want, I would like, I would rather cover that towards the end because I want to, I want to keep things super crystal clear because there's duplicate content issues that are fuzzy. Um, and, uh, and the strategy for dealing with them is similarly fuzzy. Um, and, uh, and oftentimes that's what we hear about what, what, what I want to stick to for at least until I, until I get to the end, uh, and which isn't actually that far, um, is, is kind of like the crystal clear, super obvious. These are duplicate content issues because these are the questions that I asked the world's best technical SEOs and got like, basically got like crickets, like, and I'll, and, and I'm going to explain why. Uh, what what was really missing and, and so on okay, okay. Um, so we'll get I'll hold those ones because I definitely want to answer them uh, uh, mm -hmm. but I want to answer them I don't want to complicate this stuff just yet okay gotcha all right so the uh, so affiliate tracking is similar to marketing parameters but I wanted to call it out as a separate separate slide um, uh, the, the the reason is because you know that you basically have no control over the what the affiliates are doing right they're gonna I mean and in a way you could you could reach out to them and be like hey you guys are doing the wrong thing but um but you didn't write these links you know like th these aren't these aren't things that you have control over um, and and it's kind of tricky what you do with this i mean i actually think it's really straightforward but you have to know the trick um okay and then the other one is uh parameter orders okay so this is um i guess mildly getting into the weeds and to be honest with you, I didn't ask um, very many of the SEOs this question because I knew that they would not be able to get it. Um, but but here you have a situation where you know basically the page is going to return the same thing um, because uh, because the only thing that's changed is these parameters are in a different order. But these are clearly different URLs in the eyes in the eyes of Google. Okay. And of course, uh, as I just sort of alluded to, there's all kinds of more nuanced types of duplicate content, but these ones are universally, universally, uh, universally applicable. Sorry. Um, basically, you have either solved these problems or you haven't solved these problems, but they apply to pretty much every website out there, right? And um, based on my interviews, there's a very small chance that you've got them done, them all solved uh, or that. Uh, okay. Anyway, so here, here's what I'm saying. I interviewed 23 of the best technical SEOs I could find. Remember I got like a hundred ish applicants and I actually kind of like looked at their resumes and sort of, you know, you know, judged them on their resumes, right? I needed people with like lots of experience doing enormous websites. And remember SpyFu is a website with, you know, hundreds of millions or billions of pages. And, uh, and that alone presents a specific type of challenge. Um, kind of like the type of challenge where I'm talking about, we have millions of inbound links. Um, so we can't just call the blogger that wrote something about us and be like, Hey, can you change this? Like there's, uh, it, it all becomes a lot more, um, you know, systematic and, uh, and you have to approach things at a, at a broader scale. There's all kinds of issues that are inherent to dealing with big sites. So I wanted to look for people that had um, lots of experience, um, particularly with really big sites. And, uh, and so I narrowed the list from, you know, a hundred down to the top, you know, tw top 25 percent ish. Okay. Um, so out of the 23 that I, the 23 best technical SEOs, only two or three knew how to deal with all or most of these issues. Um, that means that 86 or 86 to 92% couldn't. Remember I said most, right? Like it's not necessarily there's, I think that there was probably two people in here that could deal with all of the issues. And, and there's like this third one that I kind of put on the, uh, kind of put on the edge, right? And so I brought this I brought this one guy in and this guy is like, you know, the top SEO at a Fortune 500 company and he shared this story, right? He says, "Okay, 
because uh, I asked him, you know, tell me some, some issues that you've dealt with at your company and where you're dealing with duplicate content. And he says, okay, we have a content, we have content on our, on our, on our blog. Um, it's, uh, it's replicated onto our main site. So they've got, they've got this blog and they publish their content there. And then some of that content, they also incorporate into their, into their main site. And so the solution, and you know, this guy is the guy in charge of figuring out the technical solution. So his solution is basically working on getting rid of the blog completely. But of course, it's a Fortune 500 company, and you you know, it's politics and bureaucracy. There's no way you're going to get rid of that blog, right? So I asked, you know, is there any way that you could fix this problem? I mean, I understand potentially there's there's some kind of reason to get rid of the blog you know maybe it sucks or something um but i said is there any any, any way that you could solve this problem at least temporarily you know uh you know without just getting rid of the blog right and uh you know he didn't have a solution for that and i'm like oh my god there's like an actually like really, really easy, like simple, like implement it like today solution. And, uh, and, and, and then, and it kind of came to me like, here's the thing. Some of these guys, some of these people knew how to deal with some of these issues, right? Like your toolbox for dealing with duplicate content is like redirects. Everyone's like, lots of people understand redirects. Okay. 301 this, 301 that, right? Like most people know that you, you know, you deal with this with some of these issues with redirects. Um, there's, in my opinion, a mass over application of redirects, like, or if you can't redirect it anyway, like there may be over overuse of redirects. Um, uh, the other, the other one is uh, index control using robots.txt. Uh, most people knew, uh, like, I would say that m the majority of people knew how to properly use robots.txt for things. Um, fewer people knew sort of uh, the no index solution. Um, but in general, I'd say that most of the uh, technical SEOs had those things. But there's this third leg of the duplicate content stool, if you will, that really gave people trouble. Um, most of them, like this is where the 87 to 92% or like, I don't know, 90% thing came from, right? Mostly. And it's because the damn thing is called canonicalization. It's the name. It's a horrible freaking name. Like, I was explaining this to my wife last night, and I was like, canonicalization. Canon and she's like, conical? Conical, so it's cone-shaped. I'm like, no, no, no. And she's like, and I was like, no, uh, canonicalization, canon. And she's like, cone, con cone, conical. I'm like, no, 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 no. So the thing is, not only, not only is not, does nobody know what the word canonicalization means, because who knows what canonicalization means? Nobody knows what canonicalization means. If you don't know what canonicalization means, you're not the only person. Nobody knows what canonicalization means. The only person that knows what canonicalization means is, is nobody knows what canonicalization means. And nobody can pronounce it. It's a stupid word. And that's basically like, the root of the problem. Okay. When I first heard about canonicalization, like, uh, which was, it's also called rel canonical. I learned about it in like 2012, which is roughly when it first came out. And I ignored it for three years. Um, you know, because, uh, I don't know. It's like, a it just seems reasonable when something sounds too technical like you kind of like it's not that i'm afraid of technical things it's just that i felt like something named that is probably a little bit too um too in-depth for me to like spend any time on like it's probably gonna freaking go away honestly it could go away um and uh and so i didn't really pay attention to it and but you shouldn't do that. You should pay attention right now because I'm telling you that, uh, that if you learn, if you put in like five more minutes here, uh, you'll know what canonical means and what it does and it will solve, uh, solve a lot of problems for you and give you a competitive advantage. It's ridiculously important. Look, somebody right here said it's super important. Yes, it is, Tim. It's really important. It's super important. Okay. 
So who's to blame? You can blame the engineers because engineers, uh, engineers are the people that name this thing. Um, and they're, uh, and, and like, I'm an engineer and I know this trick. Um, if you want to become the smartest person in the room, right? Uh, one shortcut to that is by using acronyms. And, uh, and the reason is that using an acronym uh, that nobody else understands or using lots of acronyms such that uh, nobody uh, understands what you're saying, um, they're not going to question you. They're gonna think that you're smarter than they are. And you basically like shortcut your way to becoming the smartest person in the room. And by the way, that's a thing that's really important in engineering. You're constantly trying to like push like, you, you know, the direction that you wanna go. Um, it's not a good idea. You shouldn't do this. Uh, if you want, like, like in a business, it's, you should try to get people to not do that. To speak plainly is a good idea. But, uh, but when you're in an organization, sometimes you just want to make things happen your way. And so you need to kind of like intellectually win people over. So I suspect that that's where it comes from. Engineers, engineers are, are dicks in this sense, especially the guys at the IETF. IETF stands for uh, Internet uh, Internet Engineering Task Force. This is like the same place where Tim Berners-Lee authored uh, the uh, HTTP spec. And so, yeah, uh, you heard it here. Uh, Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of the internet, is a dick. Actually, Tim Berners-Lee, he didn't have anything to do with it. It was, uh, it, was these, it was these guys who are like, in real life, actual geniuses uh, named uh, Jay Kupke and um, M. O. E. Hey. And these guys authored a document called the RFC 6596. Actually, these are not real pictures of those guys, but these are real pictures of Cupkey. Uh, they're real pictures of actual IETF project chairs. And it's, you know, they actually have, go ahead and take a look at the photos. They're, they're similar. If anybody can find a picture of Cupkey or oh, hey, uh let me know, like chat it in here because I, did this I put these pictures in at like maybe two in the morning last night and so uh, I didn't have time to actually find those guys their pictures aren't available I couldn't find them anyway here's the smoking gun if you read the actual text of this stupid RFC of this beautiful RFC they knew that no even the other engineers that they're trying to get uh, like uh, comments from they knew that nobody understood what canonical meant because they define it in here as the preferred version. They knew it. They knew nobody would understand canonical. But yet, for whatever reason, they're like, canonical is definitely what we're going to go with, not rel preferred. Rel preferred would be like way better, like significantly better. In fact, you know what? I actually thought about what, what would be a better name, and I was coming up with these rel original, rel best version, rel main, rel non-duplicate, all those would be like better. But then I found, then I looked into the RFC and dang it, they have like rel preferred in there. Oh, they would have just done this with everybody would know, everybody would have this thing solved. I guarantee it. If you knew that it was rel preferred, nobody would be confused. Because it's really that simple. I mean, basically what rel canonical does is it says, hey Google, I'd love to give you a redirect, but there's, you know, good reasons that I'm not. Uh, this page is a duplicate. Please forward all the link juice and authority and whatever AI shit you've got going on to this page. And then you give it this page. Here's the page. And, uh, you know, best of luck with all the self-driving stuff. Okay. So let's get into solutions. But first, let's review the tools. Okay. So I said that we have uh, redirects. And I am basically not going to recommend any other type of redirect to today other than the 301. 301 is what you need. Uh, index control, we got robots.txt. Hopefully you guys know what robots.txt is. It's the file that goes at the root of your, uh, of your domain. It's usually invisible. You never see it, except if you type in your website slash robots.txt, it'll say some things in there that'll cause um, you know, crawlers to either crawl or not crawl your website. Um, and then we've got, and then similarly, uh, you can put a uh, noindex um, t 
tag at the top of any page that you also don't want to index. So there's two different ways of doing it. Um, and there are uh, kind of like, um, there's oftentimes implementation advantages to the no index. Uh, there's like, you know, bureaucratic like reasons to, to do those things. And anyway, the final one is canonicalization. This is our rel canonical tag. Those are the tools that we have. Those are the tools that you need to solve your duplicate content issues. Note what's not on the list. Sitemaps. Don't really have anything to do with duplicate content. I mean, some people definitely will definitely, definitely, definitely tell you that they, that it does. Um, that's a fairly common answer when I ask people about duplicate content is that you do something with sitemaps. It's really not the case. Um, also, no follows. Not really, not really an important thing. Basically, no follows are, don't have much to do with, with duplicate content. In fact, maybe you could do something with some of these things, but it's not really the main part of the solution. Uh, also, of course, being really, really careful. Nope. <laughs> And asking people nicely to change their links, not, not good. Okay, so let's go into solutions. Here we go. So the WW, these are the ones, these are the exact same ones. Now I'm just going to give you the solutions to these. Okay, so it's uh, the WWW versus the non-WWW. Um, the solution is a 301. Um, let me think. There's so basically, right, if you want if you want people to end up going to www.spyfu.com, what you do is you have a 301 when somebody goes to spyfu.com. You 301 the spyfu.com to the www.spyfu.com. I don't think that there's any other reason that you would want to use any other solution. It's always going to be a 301. HTTP versus HTTPS. Now, okay, so... If you want to be able to serve HTTP and HTTPS, um, maybe for like, I, this was, this was, this was like a concern, I think more so a few years ago where like hypothetically some things wouldn't support HTTPS. I think that the best solution now is most likely H, uh, 301, okay? So I think that probably you want to go uh, to 301, all of your HTTP stuff to HTTPS. You could get away with that. But you could also, you could also canonical everything uh, on your HTTP to your HTTPS or vice versa. If you happen to want everything to be able to be served either via secure sockets or not, then you could do canonical. I, but, I, but I think a 301 might be a reasonable solution, probably the best solution for most people. So trailing slashes, trailing slashes, you just 301 that, right? So choose whichever one you want. I think that the trailing slash is like, um, uh, like the better spec these days. Um, so you would uh, do that. Uh, for case sensitivity, It's pretty much a 301. 301 is is your is your best solution in almost all cases. I'm trying to think of the, it, what what I'm thinking about. Uh, I mean, if you happen to have if these okay if these pieces of content are are different, right? If you have a website because Linux has the ability to be uh, case sensitive, so you might have your website set up to be case sensitive. Case sensitive, um, like um, Microsoft. Uh, is is not case sensitive. I think that generally WordPress is set up usually not to be case sensitive. Um, so most of the time, like 99% of the time, these things will return the same piece of content. And so what you want to do is redirect to one or the other. It's pretty typical to use the all lowercase version. Um, with DNS, with the DNS thing here, um, where it's where it's the host, you don't need to worry about it. But there might be some there might be some non SEO benefits to to doing a 301 um, because because some like analytics platforms um, might be case sensitive for the whole URL. 
um, it might make sense to do 301, or you know, you it might it might clean up your data a little bit. There's there might be some benefit to doing a 301, but and also it might be easier to just lowercase the entire URL when you implement the whole uh, main purchase or when you implement when you implement this one. It might be easier to just make sure that everything gets lowercase. The whole thing does. Um, so I don't think that there's probably any significant downside to 301ing those. Um, so operational environments. So these ones uh, you do uh, robots or no index. Um, and so, um, like the easiest, the easiest thing to implement uh, if you have full control of the website. Like if you're not, if if you are like also the technical person, it would just be to uh, make those, uh, make these additional operational environments um, not robots.txt. Now, I maybe could have put in a slide here. Um, but if you're gonna use robots.txt to like make these things not indexable, one thing that you should do is, is monitor those robots, right? Because what can happen is like your developer or somebody, robots isn't something that you ever see. It's not something that a customer is ever gonna complain to you about. Nobody's ever gonna know if the wrong version of your robots.txt gets deployed. So I recommend going to uh, using a website called roboto.org. It's a free tool that'll monitor your uh, robots and tell you if it ever changes. Uh, it'll just send you an email. It's like, hey, your your robots.txt changed. You should, you know, look into that. Right? It's super useful and it saved me many times. And by the way, of course, if you end up having like duplicate versions of your entire website, that like dilutes your entire all of your rankings for everything. So it's a really big deal for a tiny, tiny little oversight. And the other thing is, is that you should monitor your main robots.txt. I had this catastrophic error like last April where we deployed basically the, um, we basically de-indexed everything because we deployed the, the robots.txt for like, for like our operational environment. We ended up deploying the one that says don't crawl anything to our main site and we you know lost like a half a million pages in in, in uh in indexing from google um like in four days it was super catastrophic we got it back eventually but it was like yeah roboto r-o-b-o-t-t-o -T -T -O dot org uh let me um you know what it's worth it's worth the time hold on one second let me just um make sure that i'm giving you the right one roboto Dot org. Should be coming up, I think. Come on. Come on, little friend. Yep, this is the one. So you see it. And you see the pricing is like basically nothing. They have, they, you can pay them something, but. Um, and uh, I don't know, I, I, but you have to have like 10 domains or more, right? All right, so here we go back to the, back to this guy. Okay, hopefully I can start the presentation right here. Otherwise we're gonna have to go. Okay, cool. All right, we got it. Um, yeah, so that's the, uh, that's the one to use. You can also use the, uh, the meta no index and the meta no index may be easier for you to get implemented uh, if you are in like a really large organization or don't have like utter control over this. Um, I've, I've heard that that's the case. No, I don't really deal with bureaucracy, right? Cause I, uh, you know, don't. Um, okay, so a secret trick, cause sometimes you don't know what you don't know. Um, uh, like dev and ops don't always tell you when something like like this comes online, right? Like they could implement at any given time one of these direct routes uh, to a basically duplicate copy of your website, and you wouldn't know about it. Um, one way to one way that you could know about it is by like looking at looking at your DNS all the time, if that's like the thing that you like to do. Um, that that might help you. You might be able to figure it out that way. Um, but uh, but your Google Analytics isn't going to tell you about this and your Google Search Console doesn't either. It would be super handy if they did, but they they don't. It really seems like a, a kind of useful tool that or useful thing that Google Search Console could have. But anyway, 
the secret hack that I use is um, is that I, I, I use SpyFu. I just know SpyFu really well, right? So I, I know all the secret hacks. Uh, so what I do is, uh, is I go into SpyFu and I look at uh, the SEO keywords tab, and then I download, I export like all of the SEO keywords, right? And I open it up in Excel, and then I filter out, I filter out all the all the subdomains that I expect. So spyfu.com, and then we have, you know, our blog is on resources.spyfu.com. So when I filter all those out, um, dang it. Um, apparently, this is an ongoing struggle, right? So cdn2.spyfu.com is somehow ranking on a bunch of things, and uh, and it definitely shouldn't. Um, and I have to get to the bottom of it. So you know, that's that's my life. Um, that's why I need to. Uh, that's why I need to hire somebody <laughs> so so that so that when I when I do a webinar and I'm like actually researching it, that that, that would come up clean. But it's kind of convenient for you guys that like li like literally I have this problem right now, even though I'm talking about it. Um, these sort of problems are constantly happening on an, on a really big site like like ours. It it's uh, um, as clean as we can possibly be. We you know there's there's still random stuff that comes up in there. Um, I actually did this last night and was, um, <laughs> oh, should I be happy or should I be sad? I, I just don't know whether or not, uh, like, cause it works out for a nice demo. <laughs> okay. So what do we do with the marketing parameters? Now here's where it gets crazy because, um, if you don't know canonical, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What do you do with this one? What are you going to like, uh, 301 that? Well, if you 301 that, then you lose all your stuff, right? You don't you don't get your tracking or maybe you do but you probably don't um depends on how you do your 301 basically if you do your 301 on a server side then you're going to lose it if you do your 301 after the page already loads maybe you get it depends on where you do the 301 in your in your code okay so anyway people will tell you that doing doing a 301 for these is the right right solution they'll also tell you that like doing a no index on this is like the right solution mm, no the right solution is the canonical. It's always a canonical. That's the right solution. Similar with affiliate tracking, right? You want to track these affiliate things. Like it's important. That's how people get paid. Um, you can't really risk doing a 301. You don't want to do a 301. You need to do a canonical. It's kind of kind of go back. It goes back to that whole letter that I wrote to Google. Hey Google, um, I'd love to do a 301 right now, but reasons. Right? There's a reason here, and the reason is that you actually need that, that parameter to go in. Um, so for these parameter orders, um, honestly, I would, you can do it with a 301 or you can do it with a canonical. Um, if you're going to do it with a 301, there may be some unintended consequences. Uh, it may mess with your application. It's possible that somehow something is relying on the way that it's it's formatted, or it's possible that you're going to end up. Um, it just you, you need to do application testing if you're going to 301 it. So the easy way to do it is to canonical, and it'll probably work most of the time for you. It'll probably it'll work. Okay, here's the thing: is that if you can 301 something, you ought to. Google says. Uh, if you can 301, it's a stronger signal. Um, but um, but a canonical is probably, in, in a lot of these cases, is probably fine. Um, and remember this question, right? So this guy had, this guy had, um, he had like a, a, a separate blog, and then he had like stuff cross posted to you know his main website. Uh, really, really, really big website. I guarantee that you would have heard of it. It's super name brand, okay? Um, so this is, this is a huge thing where they have a lot of duplicate content. And his idea, his goal is to just get rid of the blog completely. Stupid simple solution is canonical. Stupid simple. Like all you gotta do is like take that either, which one, which one, take your choice. Is it the blog that's going to be the preferred version or is it, or is it the one on your main website? Maybe it's probably the one on your main website, right? Take the one on your main website, make that the canonical, it gets all the link juice. It gets all the link juice from everything, okay? So that's like ridiculously straightforward solution. And um, like, not only would it save 
and not only would they increase their ranks and uh, and you know improve, you know basically make money from that, right? Um, but it would save a lot of headache, right? He would never have to like go to meetings and like get things done in bureaucracy. Um, there wouldn't be like there wouldn't be like this cost of migrating, you know, content. There it would just be like, well, how about I just how about we just do a rel canonical to the original content? Done. That's it. Okay. So I hope you're awake. I, I tried to make this horribly, diff, you know, annoyingly uh, technical subject entertaining. Um, I'm here for your questions. Um, if if you're one of these guys that's like nodding your head the entire time, uh, you know, take a look at that job uh, on SpyFu. Uh, or share it with a friend if you uh, if you know somebody that's uh, that fits the bill. Um, also, a couple of uh, a couple of specials. We do a 25% lifetime discount for anybody on this webinar. Um, so I think that that uh, it would make it so that you would pay right, like roughly $29 a month for SpyFu forever. That's pretty dope. Um, and if you're an existing customer, you can uh, upgrade to the uh, to the professional annual plan for $3.99 a year as opposed to $6.99. Uh, and those are your links right there. You can copy those down or, or uh, you know what I'll, I'll do is I'll paste these links into the chat. If I, hold on, hold on, hold. Patrick, are you queuing up questions? I've been queuing them up this whole time, so we should be, uh, yeah. we should be pretty set, yeah. Let me, See if I can, you know what? Uh, oh no, I guess nobody else can, can copy and paste this stuff other than me. Go ahead and, uh, oh yeah, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna paste this one in, send to all, boom. So you guys got that. And then here's this little guy. I'm gonna paste it in, come on little friend. My copy and pasting capabilities are, are decreasing. Here we go, send all. And then here's that. Here's that job thing. Go ahead and definitely share this on your social, okay? This is, uh, I really expected, I did not intend to be like sort of promoting a position. I thought that I would have it filled because I plan, we plan planned this, uh, this thing out like I'm, you know, three weeks ago. And come on. Well, I can't quite put, paste that one in, in my thing for some reason. It's like doing some weird stuff. So go ahead and uh, hit me with some questions, Patrick. Okay, but I know we have, a ton. This is like awesome. Yeah, we have a lot of questions, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of ramble off. Uh, I'm going to kind of mush up a few uh, for mm -hmm. you um, yep. because people are, people are curious about – I mean, you talked about uh, you know, different URL stuff and, and how that can be considered duplicate content. But there's plenty of other different different stuff. People are again wondering if it's ten percent different. Um, is that considered duplicate? If people have two different sites in two different countries with the exact same content, you know, if they're mirror sites or ones in the U.S. and ones in Canada, is that considered duplicate content? And what's the best way of handling that? And then people are just kind of wondering, how do you find out what is? You know, what's considered? If your site has duplicate content on it, how do you how do you even figure that out well I mean for all these really straightforward ones you just would type in the URL and see what happens and uh, and you could also look and see if uh, if you know if you've got the right if you're doing if you're handling it the right way right put in put in put in your your you know home page and uh, append some random you know query string parameter to it like that marketing parameter and uh, and see if it um, um, see if you've got a canonical for it. If you don't, then, you know, that's broken. Um, in terms of, in terms of, in terms of duplicate content, that's like more nuanced is 10% difference different enough. You know, maybe, um, I guess, I guess it's 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 like uh, it depends on like how you know is it just an image that's different? It, are, when you're talking about the ten percent differenceness, is that um, is that like you've got like a whole bunch of boilerplate content and then like some like location specific content? I think that that's like I think that that's like 
like sort of okay, but if you uh, if you have a whole bunch of like locations, it might be better to try to canonicalize all those to like um, like a region. Um, um, yeah, like so. There's 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 a lot of uh, if you've got if you got one one we talked about this in our SEO audit uh, or what do we do a content audit uh, one last time right that was the uh, the topic and uh, in the content audit one you've got a, sc a scenario where uh, maybe we do like an annual report of something we talk about well like you know what are the top SEO trends of 2018 and 2017 or something like this right well you could uh, canonical from the uh, you don't really want to redirect that old content because it's got links going to it uh it is different content it's not the same but you could uh you could you could do a canonical to the um uh to the newest one to the newest one on the same topic like because that's your preferred one right that's the one that you would want when somebody does a search for for uh seo trends you'd want that one to show up um uh let's see did i did i miss any of like the things that you asked there um i don't i don't think so like the uh i'm still a little unclear about the international one like are you supposed to uh you know are you supposed to oh it? international yeah sorry yeah. okay so so international um if it's in a different language then you can you can use the uh uh um the lang the language um the language tags right so and that's totally fine um, that's not that's not duplicate content if you've got something in uh, the exact same content in two different languages or two different like uh, like if we had spyfoo.com and spyfoo.co.uk and those were literally the exact same content uh, that would be duplicate content for sure okay um, now what if you, uh, here's here's another here's another question is if you're doing a, if you're a B testing URLs is that considered duplicate content by by Google um, it, it can be, but Google, Google understands, Google deals with, uh, AB testing, uh, quite often. Here's the one thing mm -hmm. that you want to make sure that you're not doing is, um, is delivering something, uh, delivering a different experience to, to, to Google bot than what you deliver to, uh, customers, right? That's, uh, um, that's called spoofing and, uh, and that'll destroy, it's like, it's not not the same thing as duplicate content, actually, but it's it's a whole other issue. And uh, and if you do it, you'll get like you'll get like a pretty longish term penalty. Like it can be it can be pretty damaging. Don't do that. I've done it, and I lost you know 50 million page views a month. It was a bummer. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a pretty big bummer. Yeah, yeah, that that's rough. Um, some other people. I kind of needed to. You know, yeah. Get crushed. <laughs> We, yeah, had, we had too much. We had too much traffic. It was awful. Yeah, I couldn't deal with it. Oh uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it's all that traffic is miserable. Um, uh, now, now with product descriptions, uh, and I mentioned this earlier. If if you have a bunch of products and you know maybe the images are different on each page, or but but basically the description is the same because it's sunken buried treasure, you know, and and you just have yeah. so much of it, and it's and it's all of that um so the description is the same for each individual one is that yeah is that going to be considered dupe it uh it depends it um it it, it depends um uh, one thing that you can do is uh one 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 sort of suggestion that that uh, that you hear a lot is to uh is to take a, make a category page and have all those uh canonical to the category but you know, I mean, I think that you have to look at it and determine whether or not you're actually getting uh, getting traffic to those individual pages. Um, and uh, um, here's the thing: is that is that you can do these sort of the the right answer if you have enough traffic is to sort of is to sort of split test these things because. The people that are that, that claim that they know the answer don't necessarily know the answer, and that's also true with the people at Google. They don't necessarily know the right answer. 
So the only way to know the right answer, and because they don't, I mean, it's really hard to know, like nobody really knows everything that there is to know about every single case. Um, and um, there's best practices, but the best practices don't necessarily have data behind them, right? So they have John Mueller's opinion or whatever, right? So it's like, okay, cool. Um, but when you, if you have the, if you have enough, if you have enough traffic, then what you do is you run a test. So you you basically cate do categories for some of, some set of your things, uh, some set of your products, and not and cat and not categories for other for another set, right? And see which ones uh, see what produces better results. The downside to SEO is that you have to wait a little bit of time. So you have to kind of keep track of these things um, as like three or six month projects uh, of tests. So you want to make the right bets. Makes sense. Um, uh, okay, let's see. Some people are wondering now. Now, how does this like three hundred ones? People are still a little bit curious about uh, the best way of going about three hundred one versus canonical. And I've been trying to respond like mm -hmm. canonical is kind of a soft three hundred one, um, but yeah. people are concerned. Three hundred ones are are scary. Um, you know, are they going to slow down hmm. the site? You know, is there? Mm -hmm. You know, what what is? what is the upside to uh, to 301 ing and uh, the upside to canonicalization if if you had if you had yeah. like a couple sentences to be like this is an appropriate time to do it this way and here's an appropriate time to do it 301 you know yeah well so number 1 think of it from the user's perspective if you're the user what would you want to have happen do you um, do you want to show them do you want to show them uh, like um a different page like like does it make sense for them to see the 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 uh um the page that you're showing them if it's if not then 301 it if you can you know if if basically the content is the same but like in in, in the case of the marketing parameters thing like obviously you don't want a 301 that if you, so you 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 like kind of can't if you if you if you have both options like you can do a canonical or you could do a 301 the search engine preferred the, the the search engine preferred thing is to 301 it right because it's a stronger signal uh, if you if you know for sure that the right answer is the is the other page and that the um and that there's no value in the page that you're showing then you ne you need you should do a 301 not just for the search engine but for your user right like if it's like a discontinued product for sure, 301, right? You don't want to send somebody to a discontinued product. Um, uh, if it's if it's an article that still has merit on its own, but there's like a newer, better one, you don't really want to do a 301 there because people may want to see that content. But you can you uh, you want to send your uh, send Google the signal that the better piece of content to rank is uh, is the newer one. Um, so it's, it is, um, a canonical is like a lower risk situation, but you have to think about it from, well, just think about it. Like, what would you want to see? You know, mm -hmm. is, if, if there's no real use case for the piece of content, then 301 ing it is basically the way to go. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, people, a lot of people are asking, uh, and I'm not, I'm not sure if this is the right time to go into that because we do have different videos regarding different tools. Uh, that we used and that we recommend um, one and so maybe maybe it, well, we can send out an email with some of those um, uh, to actually how to do this stuff people are wondering how do you how do you canonicalize you know people are asking specifically like about Moz or screaming frog or is there a tool you can use? even people are asking if we, you can find dupes in spy or if there's different tools to find to find duplicates um, so I'm not sure how you want to address that, but I just want to put some people at ease. Okay. Uh, yeah, I did not. Um, there's actually a lot of different ways. Like, okay, so one way that you could uh, that you could do like a canonical is by going in and editing the code. Like, based, um, you know, if, if you go to, um, I'll show you an example. Okay, so if you if we go into um, you know, spyfu.com slash, uh, let's do like some random, random parameter. 
equals oops equals Mike. It would be funny if this was like oh right okay sorry uh, because I'm logged in I can't just uh, I can't go to the when I go to the home page it takes me here um, so now I wouldn't go random param now you know maybe I'll just log log out or something. Now I'll just do it this way. Uh, no, that this this page isn't. It wouldn't necessarily need to do a canonical because it's not visible from the outside. So let me just log out. Everything runs slow when it's running on uh, when when go to meeting or go to webinar yeah. is running. Yep. It's like it's consistent takes over everything. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a consistent failure. Um. So, so what are you doing here? Yeah. Okay, can you see what I'm doing? I, I can see what I can see what you're doing, but I'm not sure what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, and what I'm doing is I'm I'm uh, I'm talk I'm doing like that sort of marketing parameter thing. I'm navigating to it here. You see that it's the same content. Now I do view page source. So inside this page source, whew, there's a lot of stuff there. But I'm just going to search for um, canonical, right? And so this canonical, like it looks like it's like super buried in some in like all kinds of like, oh my God, that's like super complicated. But yeah. it really doesn't matter very much where you stick this guy, right? You just stick it up here at the uh in the top of your page next to all the other look meta, 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 this guy, these links go right next to these meta stuff. Okay. So you stick it up there and that's it. So this thing does a rel canonical to https ww.spyfu.com forward slash um, even though I put this random parameter in here um, so that's how it's implemented and so you uh, you end up like modifying your source code um, but of course you know I, I tell a developer modify the source code <laughs> here's how yeah. I want it to be modified um, and then I look and see that it's done or um, you know in uh, in WordPress uh if you have like the yoast tools installed you can you can uh set those canonicals uh, at, at for every page mm -hmm. um you know like most of the stuff that i'm talking about ends up needing to be implemented for all pages or, or a lot you know you want to do a redirect everywhere yeah so um uh or you want to do a canonical for all pages that have this you know if you went to any website web page on spyfu and put in that random parameter it would uh uh, it would it would do a, a proper canonical. Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some like lightning round <laughs> questions. Yep. Yep. Um, so would you ever would you ever recommend a 302 uh, versus a 301 ever? Yeah. No, I don't really think so. I mean, yeah. okay, it, okay. A 302 means a temporary redirect, and a 301 yeah. means a permanent redirect. In the case of duplicate content, I don't think that I I don't think that I would ever recommend a 302. Um, yeah, I could be wrong, but it's just not, it, you know, I, I just, I just, I just wouldn't do it. Um, mm -hmm. in a, in the case of a 302, like, uh, it, a 301 is obviously a stronger signal to Google that says this is, this is the, uh, the, you know, this is never going to change. Mm -hmm. Um, a 302 says this, uh, this is, this could definitely change. You should, you you know this could definitely change. Don't necessarily reset everything. So 301 is is definitely the preferred solution when you're when you're basically thinking ah you know there's no point in this other piece of content. Um, oh, someone's mentioning yeah. uh, uh, fixing a website temporary down website 302. That that does seem yeah. reasonable. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Any 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 time when the redirect is is temporary, mm -hmm. then you would want to use a 302. Anytime when you expect it to not be permanent, right? Mm -hmm. But in the case of duplicate content, I don't, I don't really think that, that fits in the in the toolkit. Oh, that's fair. Um, okay, next one uh, is about slashes. There's a couple of questions here about slashes. Uh, one is if you have um, spyfu.com slash versus spyfu.com. Uh, if they both redirect, here's the two questions. If they both redirect to the same URL, is that considered duplicate content? And which one is preferred, with slash or without slash? Wh which one would you recommend? 
I believe that the slash is closer to the uh, to the, expe- the to the spec, right? Like that's like kind of like the more technical uh, the the more technical answer. Like um, things are supposed to end in slashes. Um, if they both redirect to the same URL, I'm assuming that you're saying that they would. Okay, well I. I can't I can't follow up with you because you actually don't know, right? So let me just say that if you if you have spyfu.com slash and spyfu.com and they both redirect to the uh to the slash, well you wouldn't want spyfu.com slash to redirect to itself, right? So that's that's just it should just stay. Um but if they if they both end up redirecting to or if the other one ends up redirecting to the one that ends in slash, then that is no longer duplicate content, but it's it's hype. Those are different URLs, and so if those both both of those URLs, if they don't have a redirect, if one of them doesn't have a redirect, then uh, then it's technically duplicate content. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Remind me of that ongoing question of whether or not uh, to no index WordPress tags and category pages. Some of these I just I don't I don't know what it means. <laughs> So, so here's here's a couple of technical questions. Remind me of the ongoing question of whether or not to no index WordPress tags and category pages, since they are mostly dupe and thin content. Uh, yeah. Okay. So um, I'm not a WordPress expert, uh, and so I don't know exactly what uh, what WordPress does by default, um, I believe that they ha- create robots uh, that, uh, that, uh, that 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 um, that eliminate those. But they also may do robots uh, no index. I'm not positive to be honest. I basically I basically don't know that much about WordPress stuff. Uh, um, and and so if you, if if we formulate if we reformulate the question in terms of like um, a generic set of results. I could answer it better, I think. Okay. Uh, now, certain websites. Hey guys, I'm just. Website- uh, oh, sorry, Patrick. Oh, just jumping in here. I know we're we're uh, scheduled to end around three o'clock, and I know on our end we're going to have to close up the webinar soon. So maybe if we pick like three more questions, and then um, anyone else you can follow up with after. Does that sound good for you guys? That sounds great. Sure. Awesome. Um. Okay, so again, a big one. I'm sorry if I've asked this and or if you've answered it. Do you have specific like third-party tools or even SpyFu to find duplicate content pages? Did you already go over that? I'm still yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. that's 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 sort of this uh, this trick here, right? So you yeah. can, um, but but it's a good it's a good it's a good point because you can uh, you can use the same thing that I do here. Um, let's see if I can find an example. Um, yeah, you can, you can use this, the same thing here to like find cases where, um, uh, where, where you, where you've got like a case. Well, you actually, you wouldn't be able to do this for case sensitivity because we automatically down case everything, but you would be able to do this for, uh, um, for query string, uh, parameter ordering. Um, let's see uh for for marketing parameters affiliate tracking so like if you find that like you've got a, a page that's ranking that has uh marketing parameters in it um you'd be able to see that in this same um in the same report i actually don't know of a better way of going about this uh than the way that i'm doing it because i don't you, you kind of don't see this stuff in like google analytics um some of it you would be able to detect in Google Analytics, or some things you can see in um, in Google Search Console. So these are kind of your tools, like GA, um, you know, tools like SpyFu uh, and Google Search Console are, are kind of like would be my go-to. But I, I'm, I happen to be really, really, really familiar with <laughs> the product that I built, right? So it, um, there, there may be other um, other solutions. Another another one you mentioned uh, HTTP versus HTTPS and also uh, you know www versus just spyfu.com without the www. 
Um, yep. Paid, you know, websites need that. What is the preferred for, you know, is HTTP or HTTPS? What, which one is preferred out of all of those and how do you handle it, 301 or canonically? Uh, those are three hundred ones, um, and HTTPS is preferred by Google. And um, and take your pick on the uh, on the www versus the uh, non www. We, dude, I don't I don't actually know for sure if there's like a there's not really a better uh, one answer is better than the other. Um, I think that it has to do with uh, with what you find to be more pleasing or what you just want to go with uh, okay. on on whether it's www or 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 spyfu. Uh, but but definitely HTTPS will get you um, a, a bonus from Google. In fact, you kind of have to do it. Yeah. Um, and then kind of final question, is there any, <laughs> any downside to doing this? Is it going to slow down your site? Is it going to make things mucky? You know, is there any downside to finding the dupes and taking care of it? And, and how beneficial is this? You know, like... It's obviously a lot of work to do. Is it going to help out, you know, a little bit, or is this just a huge, huge deal? And does it hurt? You know, are all these three hundred ones going to slow stuff down or screw stuff up? You know, no, no, it's not going it, to. This isn't going to hurt. Um, I mean, the thing is, is that is that uh, you're talking about, you know, single milliseconds at the most. And in terms of like the amount of uh, of content that you're sending down potentially is like, um, you know, it's it would be measured in bytes, like not kilobytes, not megabytes, but bytes, like so, like you know, thirty <laughs> thirty bytes. <laughs> um, so uh, so no, no, like from a performance perspective, this is definitely not something you should worry about. Uh, in terms of um, in, in terms of the amount that this will improve your uh, your your rankings, uh, in some cases it, it it can make a huge difference. I'll tell you <laughs> that like I used to have like several websites, you know, like for these um, for these stupid uh, uh, operational environments. There's, I mean, clearly. Really, there's some, there's cdn2.spyfu.com. I didn't know about. It. I didn't know that that we were we were ranking on any of those, uh, and so it's it's a recent thing. But that used to be something that would uh, uh, where we had many of those things ranked, and so we were definitely splitting up our our authority. Mm -hmm. um, potentially, you know, you can you can get like um, you know you could get like a Fifty percent return in terms of your you know your rankings uh, or you know so I would I would imagine that you're going to get someplace between you know you know ten and fifty percent uh, return um, so that that can either be a big deal uh, or not but there's it's most of these things are actually really simple to do um, especially the ones that I've listed out here today like uh, the ones where you're trying to like go through every piece of your content right like the content audit thing that we talked about is quite a bit more in a way time consuming this stuff is like a little bit more technical but the beautiful thing about technical is that it applies to everything and uh, and so you can make like this you can basically do this thing it'll take you you hand it over to your developer and um, and it'll kind of all solve itself pretty fast um, nope, and yeah, not. no, not not really any, not really any significant risk. Okay. Like, there's definitely no performance problems, and um, no, that I don't think there's much risk here at all. Cool. All right. Yeah. So uh, that that's our three questions, I guess. Uh, so if you <laughs> if uh, I guess we need to wrap it up. Um, uh, thank you guys all for uh, for staying. I really appreciate your time, um, and like I always love the engagement. Um, it uh did you um uh did you want to ra wrap it up any other way there uh no i think we're also thank you so much mike for bringing your expertise and for all this information and just as a reminder to everybody we will be sending out a video excuse me replay as well as a pdf um of the slides so uh thank you guys both for joining us and for providing all this insight always so great to have you Oh snap! Somebody actually posted in here the actual pictures of uh, the uh, the dudes. I gotta make sure that I get those. Awesome! Uh, I should have. I would. I would like to have shown those. Those are pretty interesting. Um, awesome! Thanks a lot. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Bye.